In the Super Bowl, number 13 continues with session four, and in this session we will be seeing the 5,200-pound modified class, the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive trucks, and the 12,200-pound super stock tractors. Hi, everybody. My name's John Arvin, and once again along with me is Dave Grimm to bring all of the action. Well, John, I look forward to it. We've had three marvelous shows, and I'm getting ready for the fourth one here as well as you, and we're going to bring the action to everybody because we've got some super equipment tonight in the 7, rather the 5,000-pound modified, the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive trucks, and then the big heavy super stocks are going to pull in our third and final class in the 12,000-pound. So we're going to go from the lightweight tractors to the heavyweight tractors with some of the biggest names in the sport. Pullers to keep your eyes on tonight. In the five modified, the Grand National defending champion, Ronnie Reed, who came in second place in our uh, afternoon show here a little bit earlier today. In the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive trucks, Glenn Davis, Tony Osteen, who won last night, uh, Howard Lewis and Jeff Reitzel, just a couple of the names to be apprised of. And in the 12,000-pound super stock, boy, we've got a bunch of those big internationals that will be trying to beat the John Deere's and the Alice Chalmers. And the Alice Chalmers tractors came close in uh, session number two. So watch for Esden Lane, Jerry Hart, John Klug, Dickie Sullivan, and you'll enjoy the action, I'm sure. And so the first three sessions of Super Bowl number 13 have provided a lot of excitement, and we don't look for this one to be any different. So relax and enjoy. And, of course, a part of Indy Super Bowl number 13 is the exposition that's going along here. It gives the fans a good chance to get a good close-up look at all the machines. And here you're seeing one unusual machine that is on exposition here this year. Mr. Turbo is a garden tractor with a one-cylinder supercharged engine and a scaled-down Camaro body fitted on. And Mr. Turbo does actually compete this machine actually pulls, but it will not be pulling here at Indy Super Pole number 13. And they say that we may never see anything quite like this again. Session four begins with the lightweight modified tractors, and first to hook up tonight will be Mark Hare of Springfield, Ohio. He calls it Hare's Hooker, uh, John. It's an Allison aircraft engine. We've seen him already pull in the seven and 9,000 pound classes. So he's also pulling down in the five, which means that he is able to pull in three weight classes just by adding or subtracting the weight. Talk to him in the pit areas. He thinks he's got a good shot here tonight. Mark Hare out of Springfield, Ohio. His family's in the farming business in western Ohio. He'll be followed by John Walsh and Pat Will. He's ready to lead the line. The track is 234 feet long. He'd like to have a full pull. Here we go. Mark Hare. He's going to stop around the 150 foot mark. Now this will be a difficult uh, decision for the track judges to make because They've got some tractors in here tonight with two Aries and two Rodex and some real high-powered machines. However, the Allison in the 5,000-pound class is very competitive with some of those alcohol burns off the engine out there. And so we will have to wait for an official decision by track officials about the setting of the sled. And we'll, it looks like Mark Hare is motioning that he's going to drop down in the order. Here's the replay. A little bit heavy on the front end. Didn't get the front end off of the, off of the track. Well, and John... They won't have a lot of weight to play with. They're in the 5,000-pound class. This tractor uh, weighing uh, no more than 5,200 pounds, which is the official weight, although we refer to it sometimes as the 5,000-pound class. And you'll notice there's no weight out in the front, and there's probably no weight out on the back because the tractor is built so close to the tolerances of the weight class. And the pull comes in at 157. And somebody's standing in the way of my monitor up there. I can't see. There we go. 157, 9.6 inches. And we'll, we'll second guess a little bit that he may turn that one down and come back later. Mark Hare. Well, also, as we've seen in all of the classes so far, they want to make a determination whether to continue in the class or change the sled. And I believe they want to look at at least one more tractor before the track judges make that note.
And Dave Walsh is going to get hooked up from Boston, Wisconsin, as we continue to get things sorted out here in the lightweight modifieds. Well, Dave and his brother John share the driving duties. We saw it earlier in the show with three of these areas in. They've removed the back motor, and he will run with two to make weight for this 5,000-pound class. So these guys have got a great shot to take it all the way. Dave Walsh out of Boston, Wisconsin. Calls it the Irish Challenger, sponsored by Farmland Insurance. And Dave comes up with a pull that's going to be near 200 feet. Nice straight run down the track, and we'll see it on replay. I see him signaling there that he's probably going to drop six places. He's holding up six fingers, and the officials are checking with him now. You can see a little bit of lift on the front end of the tractor, not, very, not too much. And he drifts to the left of the track just a bit at the end of the run. It's going to come around around 200 feet. And here's the distance, 198.4.6. And John, that was the restart. Dave Walsh was the first official puller on the restart. So they reset the sled after Mark Hare made his original run. So that'll now be... Well, he's going to drop six positions, we understand, so we'll be seeing him come back a little bit later. So as of yet, we still don't have an official distance. Here comes another Allison engine, and mounted atop that machine is Tad Will from Central City, Pennsylvania. This is a, an Allison aircraft engine, and for those that might have missed some of the earlier programs, it's built back in World War II. 1,710 cubic inches, just a lot of raw horsepower there. It's a big V12, similar to a Packard or a Merlin engine or a Jaguar engine. Very dependable motor. A lot of these pullers have used these engines five and six years in their tractors. Here we go, Tad Will. One of the toughest tractors in the fly. run for Tad Will. He'll be happy. He's still a little heavy on the nose, but any time you can get that far down the track, you'll take it every time you pull. And that's probably the best performance we've seen by an Al a single Allison engine in this competition. Well, Tad and his family, mom and dad are in the coal business in Central City, Pennsylvania. The Tinker Toy 2, here it is on replay, and it will be a nice straight run. Not much right to left motion. Now, John, as we indicated before, he doesn't have a lot of weight to play with, so they have to pretty much take the tractor as it is on the balance. And he comes up with 222, 5.3, as he makes his way down the track. And, of course, that's going to be now our first official distance and the distance that the rest of the pullers are going to be shooting for. Next puller to hook up will be Todd Stone, the son of Gardner Stone, who we have seen in action in previous sessions. Well, we've got a break in the action while he's backing up the hook on, John. We want to salute the fine sponsors here at Super Pole 13, including American Cyanamid and their products Counter, also Case International, Tractor Company, Kendall Oil Company, and Red Man Chewing Tobacco. Todd Stone now from Middlebury, Vermont, Getting said, he has a single Allison engine, and he's got the chain pulled tight. The green light is on. The green flag is up by the starter, and he's set to go. They call it the general. You see all the stars on the fenders, and he's got power. Look at this. He comes up on the back two tires, really digging away. And he carried the front end for a long way, got it up higher than what we've seen so far. And John, just as we saw this afternoon in the 7,000-pound modified, look at the amount of dirt that is in front of the pan on the weight transfer machine. They are really pulling a lot of dirt, which means they've not only got to battle the sled, but they've got to battle all the dirt that's piling up in front of the buckboard on the sled. So they're pulling a lot of weight and pulling a lot of dirt and they're digging up the track out there pretty good. A lot of alcohol burning off on that engine. We can feel the heat from where we are. There it is. It's an injected motor and it has two turbochargers on the tractor so he can make plenty of power. In fact, many of the pullers around the country think that Gardner Stone 
can make as much power out of an Allison as anybody. But he comes up short, his son Todd Stone, at 198.10.2, and it'll put him in second place. Ronnie Reed from Longford, Kansas, is getting backed up to the sled and ready to go. And just like Dave Walsh, he'll be pulling in three classes. He's already pulled in the nine and the seven. Here he goes in the five. Here's probably the favorite in the class since he was the 83, 84, and 85 Grand National Pulling Circuit champion. Ronnie Reed has pretty much completely dominated the five modified the last three years. It was just about 10 years ago that he ran only one motor in tractor pulling, and now he runs three. But for the five, to make weight, he has to remove that back engine, that third engine. He's got these two engines for crankshaft to crankshaft. He'll make about 3,000 horsepower. Here he goes, Ronnie Reed and Devin. Oh, boy, a full pull for Reed, and that sets the stage for some of the other hot dogs in the remainder of the class to try to catch him. Ronnie Reed didn't waste any time. He got right on it early. A lot of tire speed and a lot of horsepower early in the run, and there was never any doubt. He never lost that power all the way down the track. So he's trying to make a big day of it as he finished in second in the 7,000 modifies in session three. Here it is on replay. Well, a perfect run because he's made so many of them, John. This is why he is the champion in the class. He moved a little bit to the right, but he's got an excellent set of brakes on there. He built this chassis entirely by himself, and he does a lot of the work on these Aries motives for not only himself, but for a lot of other pullers, so he really knows how to get the maximum amount of horsepower. Our first full pull, and of course now it'll be up to Angler and Hutcherson and Austin and Garrett and some of these other pullers to try to catch and tie him. Tim Engler had a full pull and another full pull in the pull-off in session three in the 7,000 modifieds, and now we'll see what he does in the 5,000. This may be a little tougher because he's on more equal ground with Ronnie Reed and Bruce Hutchison because they'll all be running two engines. It's just a matter of can they get the maximum amount of power out of them and do the best job of driving. Because this guy's a real pro and one of the up-and-coming stars on the NTPA circuit. And his style seems to be uh, like Ronnie Reed. He's going to get on it early. Has a plastic molding injection business in southwestern Indiana, a little town called Princeton, beautiful town. And Tim Engler knows how to pull tractors. The two 557 Aries motors will make about 4,000 horsepower. He's on it. Look at him. Look at his nose. And he takes it out the gate. I believe maybe a little faster than Ronnie Reed did. He really got that front end up in the air, although he came to a stop a little quicker. Ron Hickson, the split operator with the decision maker, wants to make sure that they don't go too far out the tunnel. Here we go on the replay. Here again, it's just about like Ronnie Reed, except he did a little bit more of a wheelie. There, he really picks up that front end, makes one more touchdown. And so much horsepower, so much wheel speed. So it's a full pull with power to spare for Tim Engler. And now we have two pullers who, are, who will move into a pull-off. Ronnie Reed, Tim Engler, but we have five more competitors coming. After turning down a test pole of 157 feet, Mark Hare is getting hooked up again. He's from Springfield, Ohio. One of the big differences of the Allison against the V8s, John, is that they're only running these at about 5,000 RPMs maximum, where the V8s will crank them anywhere from eight. Sometimes they'll even hit 10,000 RPMs, which means they can just steer in that rear end of those big tires that much better. But the Allison's a very dependable motor. Not bad at all. A beautiful run for Mark Hare. As we said, every time we see him pull, he always makes good straight pulls. And he's going to come up about 50 feet short, but 
that uh, truly remarkable run. On the replay, I think we'll see there goes the front end, got into the air this time. On his first run, he didn't get hardly any lift at all, but this time he did get it up into the air a little bit, and he came through with a little better performance. 196 feet, 196, 8.8 for Mark Hare. Well, John, we're not exactly sure who's doing the driving because we've got the mass marauder down there in the driver's seat. We had been informed that John was going to do the driving. Then we were told that Dave. So we'll wait to see who's driving after the run. The Walsh brothers out of Wisconsin. The frame was really twisting on that pull, and John, they've got to be at least, they're close, less than two feet out there making a full pull. So whichever one of the brothers it is, it was a, a good pull, a good strong pull. Here it is on the replay. You can see that frame twist, a lot of pressure and a lot of torque on that frame. That left side wheel comes up a little bit higher than the right side. Well, it looks like that frame just wants to twist in two and flip right over. But there's a lot of flex built into these frames. And John, oh, so close out of a possible 234 feet for a full pull. They come up short at 232, 1.3. And now from Patriot, Indiana, Bruce Hutcherson, a new name for Indy number 13. Well, certainly a new name this year, although he's been here many, many years. In fact, uh, if we look over the results in the most win category, Bruce Hutcherson is fifth on the all-time record. He has won here four times. The Banner Brothers have won seven, Hart is five, Daddy Dean five, and Dennis Brabeck and Bruce Hutcherson have won four times. He has a brand new sponsor as of last year, the folks at Carhartt, and this is what they call the Carhartt Macon Bacon Special. And he'll really crank the tires. Now, he's running a Rodec aluminum block motor, which is similar to the Aries, about 557 cubic inches. He lives right down on the Ohio River, the north side in Indiana. He farms about 4,000 acres. Here we go, Hudson Central Patriot, Indiana. makes it now a three-way tie, but he might have done some damage to that front motor. We saw smoke coming out of that left front bank. And so the Bacon Bacon Special was making tracks on that one. Right down the middle of the track, a good strong run all the way. Not a lot of lift on the front end, but able to pull it out the gate. Here it is on the replay. Just a little bit of a drift to the left, not too much, no, not much lift on the front end, but he kept the power going and pulled it out all the way through. Well, here's a tractor that can run in the 5, 7, 9, and 12, but he's only pulling a Super Bowl 13 in the 5 and 12, which he qualified in, and we'll see him back in the fifth and final show with five of these Rodec engines. And so, Ronnie Reed, Tim Engler, and Bruce Hutcherson await the pull-off. Is that why he turned it away? Yeah, it looks good. We've... We've received word that the driver for the Walsh team a few moments ago was Dave Walsh, and now Rick Austin is backing in and getting hooked up. He's from Broadhead, Wisconsin. It's, it's easy to tell if that's Rick because he doesn't have that full mask on like a lot of the helmets provide for some of the other drivers. From Broadhead, Wisconsin, with Chevrolet, the Dirt Sport. Something certainly has gone wrong there. He seemed to hesitate at the beginning and never really did get into the pole. He either lost the motor, I'm trying to say if the engine is running, or he might have had it on the wrong gear and it was a lot to pull. Rick Austin has pulled five and 7,000 pound modified classes for quite a few years now. His Chevrolet has always run good. You can always count on him to make excellent pulls. As we look at the replay, everything seems to be running okay until about right here and it just slows down and 145 2.3 is a long way from being down to that full pull mark of 234 feet tough break for rick austin
Wayne Garrett will be the last puller before the pull-off, and he has hopes of joining that pull-off. We've seen a lot of great names of tractors, and there you get an excellent shot from our great camera work here at Trackside. Triple chaos, because he does run three engines in the seven and nine later on, but he's only running two here in the five, because all of these drivers have to make weight, and they just can't make weight with the third engine. From West Alexandria, Ohio, 427 Chevy, Wayne Garrett! Once again, as we saw with Rick Austin on the previous run, he never really built up any speed. He started very slowly and never really did. He didn't get the front end up. Not a whole lot of power there. I don't know if something was wrong or not. So we go to the pull-off, right, John? A disappointing run for Wayne Garrett. We'll get the distance for you as soon as it comes off of the laser. Here it is, 142 and 7 inches. 142 and 7. Here it is on the replay. Just never did build up any tire speed and get it going down the track. Stayed right in the middle. No problem there. But a long way off from qualifying for that pull-off. So Wayne Garrett from West Alexandria, Ohio, is going to be finished for this evening. And we're set for a pull-off. Ronnie Reed, Tim Engler, and Bruce Hutcherson will be coming back. We're set to begin the pull-off. Ronnie Reed is getting hooked up from Longford, Kansas, going for another championship. John, this is going to be a, just a tremendous battle between the three top modifieds in this class, Reed, Engler, and Hutcherson. And Engler and Reed running the same motors, identical. They each, of course, got two. Here we go. And the pull-off. And Reed gets the sled on their way. Uh, shaking the rafters here tonight, John. He didn't waste any time getting down the track. No, he came at it for all he was worth. We'll see on the replay that he did get to the left side of the track and at the end of the run pulled it back into the center. And as he came to the left and had to hit the brake, you could tell he lost a little bit of momentum but still got a lot of uh, footage even after he hit the brake. There he's killed the engine. Now we see it on replay. His front end's up in the air as he drifts towards the left side of the track and he's hitting that right brake to pull it back in a little bit. Bouncing just a touch, here's the distance. Ronnie Reed comes in with a 2.13, 3.5, and he's set a tough pace for Tim Engler and Bruce Hutcherson to meet. Well, that is an awfully good distance, but Engler, the way he ran this afternoon in the seven, he could be right there at the end. Engler, up next. Even the name of Tim Engler's tractor indicates that he likes a challenge. Mission Impossible. John, this is what it's all about. Tractor for tractor, driver versus driver, motor versus motor, horsepower. Who can put the best combination on the track? Engler has been running awfully good this last year. He built a brand new tractor at 84, which was a marvelous machine of four Aries. He wasn't satisfied, so he built another one, new one for 86. This is a brand new tractor as of a month ago. So I'm in San Antonio in Biloxi, Mississippi. And boy, the way he ran this afternoon, Ronnie Reed should be worried right now. Ronnie Reed isn't worried anymore. <laughs> no, Ronnie Reed has nothing to worry about now. He knows he doesn't lead this class. The only thing he can be worried about right now is if he'll stay in second place. But Tim Engler, another smile on his face because he knows he's had power to spare today. And as they say at the Indianapolis 500, this man and this team has it hooked up. They've got it together right now. Oh, boy. Simply marvelous. This is what pulling is all about. And they both have excellent machinery. Not quite a full pull. 233.7.4. 233.74. 
Tim Engler just laid down a run of 233, 7.4, and now Bruce Hutcherson has to go after it. Well, Ronnie Reed still has to be worried about second place at this point at 213 feet, 3.5 inches, because Hutcherson, who hasn't been quite in championship form the last couple of months, really would like to have things start coming around his way. We'll also watch Bruce, of course, in our final show in the 12 Open with five of these inches in there. Here we go, the car hard, take it, take it, special. And I believe Hutcherson has taken over second place. An excellent run, but more smoke coming out of that left bank on the front motor. Just before he got to the 200 foot mark, the smoke began pouring out. Well, he may have an oil problem there. We've seen that in the last couple of weeks for Bruce, and he says it's nothing to worry about, just a little too much oil. And he's pulling away, and we'll see it on replay here, and you'll see that smoke come out from the left side of the tractor. Didn't quite uh, lift the way that Bruce would like to have it. And you got to remember, they've got those engines right out there in the front, so they don't have a lot of weight to play with. And look at that. 212, 3.0. And so Ronnie Reed hangs on to second place just by a foot. By a foot. I would have thought he took over second place. But Hutcherson finishes in third, Reed in second, and Tim Engler makes it two wins in a matter of about four hours. And we'll hear from Tim Engler after winning the 5,000 modified tractor class. I'm here at trackside with our second winner of sessions four, or rather three and four, Tim Engler of Princeton, Indiana. And Tim, this is a big day in your tractor pulling life. I'd say it's gotta be the biggest day we've ever had, Dave. Now, was it a little more competitive in this class here tonight than it was the seven, or is it pretty equal? Well, I think any time you run two against two motors, it's definitely more competitive. Probably this afternoon, you know, we had probably a little more power than anybody else, or a lot more power than anybody else. Tonight, the win was probably more deserved than it was this afternoon. Well, I think you're being very humble on that, and this has been a great day. The tractor's working perfect. Everybody thought you had, and you did have a good tractor in 1985, and they were surprised when you built a brand new tractor for 86. But I think you're making believers of a lot of other pullers out there. Well, I think that probably a few people thought we'd miss out. I think we've been very fortunate on weight. It's not like it's the first tractor we built, which we do build tractors for other people, but we weighed the front axle, we weighed different parts of the tractor, and we've tried to get the combination to work out as well as possible, and I think probably 15 years of pulling tractors helped out a little there. Are you excited that you might have a chance to, to make it three wins in a row tomorrow afternoon? Well, no doubt about it. I'm just tickled to death that we got to come to the Indy Super Bowl because I think it's the best pull in the country. We're set to start the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive truck class, and Jeff Reitzel from Orient, Ohio, with the Dodge, will be the first competitor. The honk and honk. Oh, he is bouncing. He has torn it up. He's either broken a ring and pinion or a drive line somewhere. Maybe the drive shaft. But you saw the bouncing out there, and the guys just have got to make smooth pulls. When you start bouncing like that, you're going to tear up the undercarriage. There's a good shot of the undercarriage here. You can see on the monitor. They're checking out the underside. We'll have to wait for an official ruling on this. I believe they're calling for a tractor to tow the truck out. So he will not be trying again right now. It does look like he stopped before the 75-foot mark, so he may have an opportunity to come back later in this class. All right, Bruce Werner is our next competitor in the 5,800 four-wheel drive trucks from Loxahatchee, Florida. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a mouthful, no question about it. Bruce has been pulling four-wheel drive trucks for many years. This is a 1976 Ford, and we don't have uh, but two Fords in this class, so the Ford fans will really want to get behind him. Bruce Werner is also a promoter down in the Sunshine State. Jeff Reitzel breaking up out there at 65 feet, 5.3. So Bruce Winter comes off the line. He's bouncing a little bit, too. He's having a bouncing problem. The iron worker, he's running out of power. 
And John, the M&M Steel Company special, the iron worker, just flat runs out of power at about the 190 foot mark. He just kind of glided it on down. There was no real uh, hard pull at the end there. Never really did get a lot of power, as you say, a lot of bouncing early in the run. And you'll be able to see that in the replay when it comes up. Here it comes. Right from the very start, it bounced at the beginning and just never really quit. Well, the wheels are moving there. They're, they're making a couple of pretty good lunges to the left in there early in the run. And he just didn't get as smooth the power, as smooth to the track, glued to the track, rather. And he flat ran out. We could tell here in the last 50 feet it was really pulling that engine down. And that comes up as a 198.7.7. At trackside here, I have the marketing manager for counter of American Cyanamid, Monty Suma. And Monty, nice to have you with us. This is your first look at this type of championship pulling event. What's your initial reaction? I'll tell you, this is the first time I've ever seen a pull, and uh, I can't believe all the power and all the noise, but it's an exciting deal. Uh, they've explained to me that uh, they got to pull it all the way down through here, and the first event tonight, we had three tractors do that, so it's really exciting to be here. I'm glad to be here. You're seeing some excellent classes. It's nice to see an agricultural company like American Cyanamid bringing out all of your products and people out here and doing some promotional work. Well, we're really glad to be here. You know, uh, this is kind of a farm event, and uh, you know, we're wanting to be where farmers are going to be, and this is one recreation that they seem to enjoy. I don't know how many people we got here tonight, probably six or 7,000, but that's a big crowd. Well, we thank you very much for stopping by and hope you enjoy the, the rest of the session. Thanks a lot, Dave. Howard Lewis from New Carrollton, Maryland, in a 73 Chevy is getting hooked up and ready to pull one of four Chevys in the class. They have the most of any truck in the class. Four Chevys, two Fords, a Dodge, and a GMC that we'll see in this class tonight. Howard Lewis has the chain tight. The green light's on. He's away. The brand new truck that has the leak and though he's got problems. Look at him bounce. We've already had a lot of bouncing, but he's on his way. High roller, really moving. Gonna blast it out the gate. Wow, full pull. And John, for a while, they were bouncing on the line, but he smoothed it out. Smoothed it out between 100 and 150 feet. And once he did, the power just really dug into the dirt and he took it out the gate. You know, it's interesting. Every year, a lot of the guys will do a lot of the work on their trucks and their tractors during the off season, which is the month of December. And a lot of times they'll come to the Super Bowl with brand new equipment, which is what Howard Lewis has right here as you see him come down the track. Brand new truck. Just a week ago, he debuted it for 1986, which it is, an 86 Chevrolet, and uh, he takes it all the way. It says 73 Chevy in your graphic, but and that was the model when he registered for the event, but like we said, he just uh, came into the arena with a brand new truck this week at 86 Chevrolet, so he's happy. Glenn Davis from Hollywood, Florida is getting set to pull, and Howard Lewis has has come up with the full pull. So we have one who is hoping that nobody else comes up with that full pull. Well, you know what the Ford fans would like. They'd like to have one of their brands out the gate and make a full pull as well. Now, here comes Glenn Davis. He said last night he just didn't have it quite on top, didn't have the gear selection like Tony Osteen did. Glenn Davis, the Grand National Champion in the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive class. The mean green pulling team. His family is in the plumbing and heating business in Hollywood, Florida. Travels all over the country, can be considered a professional puller. Pulls about 40 weekends out of the year and is a, a bachelor on the circuit. Taking right. a little bit of time to get RPMs and manifold pressure built up, and now he's away. The secret is to make it a smooth pull. Yes, he's much smoother. It's slowing down, though. Extremely close. We'll wait for an official word on that one. That one's tough to call. John, from about 175 all the way to the 234 foot mark, which is a full pull. The wheels kept getting slower, just kept pulling the engine down. That just goes to show, and it may be hard for us to convey on your television screen, but it is taking power out here tonight in session number four. It's a beautiful paint job on the truck, and here you see it on replay. Drifts a little bit to the left side of the track, but no big problem. Kept it right in bounds easily. And he did get the full pull. It's hey. official. All right. He's a happy guy now. That means officially we'll have a pull-off in this class. At this point, a couple of Chevrolets out the gate. Howard Lewis at Glenn Davis.
Robert Smith of the Three Bears polling team, Winchester, Virginia, is getting hooked up and ready to go here. Two full polls already. Well, John, uh, Winchester, Virginia, as we mentioned in an earlier part of this broadcast, is a real hotbed for four-wheel drive truck pulling. Beautiful little town in uh, northern Virginia. He's got a 1982 Chevrolet with a 513 cubic inch Chevy engine under the hood. These are all injected engines, incidentally. They do not make as much noise as we saw earlier in the 5,000 pound modified when they were running supercharged motors. And for the kids, of course, he once again has that big five foot high teddy bear sitting right next to him for good luck. He's bouncing badly, but he smooths it out. Oh, he's on it. Three bears pulling. Hey, look at it. Go, go, go. Interesting to note, John, in the case of Glenn Davis, Glenn just kept getting locked in even though the RPMs kept coming down. Bob Smith had a lot of RPMs and a lot of tire speed right at the end of his run, but he came up short by a couple of feet. This by a couple of feet is right, but it's still a, a fine pull, and depending on what happens in the rest of the class, it could put him in a winner's circle at third place. Well, they call it the Three Bears Pulling Team, as we see in the replay here as he goes down the track, because his family of himself and his wife Sarah and son Scott are the, the Three Bears. And here's the distance, 229, 4.2. 229, 4.2, just lacking a little bit over four feet of a full pull. A nice run for Robert Smith, and we'll see if he can hang on to third place. From Perry, Oklahoma, Mike Johnson is going to be driving, and he's in a Chevy. All right, now he does have a distinct advantage right now because they have probably the biggest motor of the class. They're running the uh, nearly 600 cubic inch Aries engine like we saw in the earlier 5,000 pound modified and the seven and the 9,000 pound classes of Reed and Engler. This being a 68 Chevrolet, the Big J pulling team, they're in the oil business out in Oklahoma and Mike and Scott Johnson travel around the country. Now it's as simple as this, they need a full pull if they want to tie for the lead and be in our pull off that we already have Howard Lewis and Glenn Davis in. Mike Johnson, last night it was Scott doing the driving. Here goes Brother Mike. Hey, he's got his boot with going. He's picked up some speed. Jake Trotter with pull. I believe they're going to do it. And they take it out with power to spare. A that very, very smooth run. No bounce in that run at all. He got away from the starting line smoothly. And Mike Johnson, a fine job of driving, becomes the third puller to enter the pull-off. Here it is on the replay. Well, he makes it the third Chevy to take it all the way with Jake Rattle and Pull. Very smooth run. We had some earlier bouncing in the truck class uh, with some of the guys that pulled early in the class, but we haven't seen that in the last two runs. Two competitors left in the class, and Tony Osteen brings out the second and last Ford in this class. Tony's from West Green, Georgia, and... He's got to have the full pull. We've already had three pullers enter the pull-off. Well, he was the winner of our 6,200-pound class. He'd like to make it two wins in a row, and he'd like to, in fact, make it three wins in a row because last year he was the 1985 winner of the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive. So he's on a streak. Tony Osteen last year was a 74 Ford. This year, a 1985 Ford, and he's got... Lots of power, but it's a long way from that starting line to the end of the track for a full bull. He's a farmer from West Green, Georgia. The Georgia Rebel has left the line very nicely. But he's beginning to lose power right now. I don't know if he can make it. You can hear, oh, yes, 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 he does it. Oh, John, I would have thought at about the 200-foot mark that he didn't have it, but he did, he did, and a great run for Tony Osteen. It was another case, as we talked about earlier, of it seemed like the tires were slowing down, slowing down, but they kept digging in, and all that horsepower in, the, in that engine was able to pull it through. A little bit of bounce early, but no big problem. He was able to smooth it out, a little bit of drift to the right, and then pull it back in. That's when you want that torque and that power at the end of your run. It's got to be there for the last 10 to 15 feet. You can see him go out the gate. He doesn't take it out by very much, but just enough to put a full pull up on the scoreboard. So Tony Osteen keeps the Ford fans' hopes alive, and now we have four pullers, Howard Lewis, Glenn Davis, Mike Johnson, and Tony Osteen await the pull-off. One more competitor. And I tell you, 
the battle in this pull-off will be exciting with the Chevrolets against the Ford. Bruce Werner made an earlier run of 198, 7.7, but that was to check the sled, and he decided to turn that one down, and so now Bruce is coming back. Well, it'll be the 1976 Ford. They'd like to even things up, have two Chevys and two Fords in the pull-off. Oh, oh, he's busted up. Oh, the sled has run into his rear end. He has broke. He has broke severely. The sled has run into his rear end. And I've got a hunch that they've done some severe damage. Look at that. They have you crumpled see, the rear end. You could see that the back tires of the truck are off the ground as the sled is tied up with the back end of the truck. There's a good shot of it right there. A major accident out there as we've had a couple of fender benders this weekend. And that'll require some body shop work, work I'm sure, because the rear end of the trucks are very, very light. They can't take much of a hit. Hasn't been a good class for Bruce Werner. Well, let's see if we can see and if we can here, see here we do have it on the replay. Because it might have been a ring and pinion. I don't think it would have been an axle. Right there, it, it really locked up. Yeah, you could see those front tires just lock up and stop. Maybe, I don't know if we can see it again or not, but they really died and bit into the ground quickly. It was right now, within a matter of uh, about two feet. It locked up. Got to think that it's probably a ring and pinion. It wouldn't have been an axle. And I don't know about a transfer case. And so there's a good shot. You can see here we do get to see it again. Here's the second replay. And watch those front tires just bite. He was also bouncing a little bit, John. There it is. And crunch, crunch, crunch. And a very unhappy Bruce Werner. That's not one picture that he'll want to watch in slow motion. Dave, we originally thought that Arnold Coburn would be driving the next entry, but it's going to be Connie Coburn. Well, in one of our earlier programs, a Dad did do the driving, but we've seen Connie drive several times the last couple of months. So let's see what this lovely lady from Toronto, Ontario, Canada can do with the 1975 GMC. And then we're expecting to go after her run right into the pull-off. And at this point, we have four full pulls, three Chevrolets and one Ford. So Connie Coburn, who really dresses up our program because she is a sweet gal, a good-looking woman, and really knows how to put the pedal to the metal. It's a 75 GMC. Arnold put a new engine in this truck uh, in about the mid part of 1985, and he's really had plenty of power throughout the, the remainder of the pulling season. The Coburns from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, perhaps came as about as far as anybody to compete in this, although we do have competitors from California. Here she is, away from the starting line. Looking good, looking good. She keeps pulling it. Oh, nice run for Connie. I think all of the ladies here in attendance as well as the men we're rooting for. And that is a terrific run, an impressive run for Connie Colburn. She's got the helmet off, and there you can see her. That's a good shot of her looking out of the, the cab of the truck. Here it is on replay. A little bit of bounce early in the run. A lot of tire speed early, spinning a little bit. There, as you can see, the bounce, but it settled down later in the run and just drifted to the left side of the track, just a touch. But she pulled it nice and straight. I don't think she would have changed a whole lot if she was to do it all over again. 230 feet, 8.2 inches. And that's the best run that anybody has made here tonight uh, without making a full pull. And so uh, you have to congratulate Connie Coburn, although I know she would have liked to add that extra four feet and be involved in this pull-off that's coming up. And the pull-off will include Howard Lewis, Glenn Davis, Mike Johnson, and Tony Osteen. Jeff Reitzel has come back. He had a mechanical problem on his first pull and has just made it under the wire. He's back and ready to try it again. His original run was a little over 65 feet, John. And then we had the restart. Uh, Jeff Reitzel from Orient, Ohio. He broke an input shaft. Jeff Reitzel being hooked up to the sled now, and he brings the Dodge back 
to try and get it into the pull-off. It's the only dodge in the class, and so the Dodge fans that are out here have high hopes for Jeff Reitzel. I bet you they were working fast in the pit area trying to get that fixed, and it's one of the nice things about the rules that he was allowed to come back. So here we go, trying to make it five and the pull off with the Dodge. We already have three Chevys and one Ford. Here he goes from the Buckeye State of Ohio, Jeff Reitzel. He backs out of it just a little bit, but he's still looking good. He's got a good pull going. He's, he's grinding it our way out there and jumping up and down a little bit late in his run. At about the 75 foot mark, he let off of it ever so slightly, got back into it and he still made a good pull, but and I think he's got to be happy, John, that he was just able to come back. Well, that was a quick turnaround. Like you mentioned, Dave, There was uh, he bounced early. We'll look at it on the replay here. He got some bouncing into the run right there about, early. About right there is where he backed out of it to smooth it out. And then we'll see him bounce again late in the run. I don't know if that cost him the full pull or not. Perhaps not. But there he begins to bounce a little bit there at the end. And 224. 224, 1.4 for Jeff Reitzel. So that's a valiant effort. You know, John, with that bouncing at the 75-foot mark and the bouncing at the end, he could have made up that 10 feet and given him a full bull. Now we are set for the pull-off. Howard Lewis on a new Carrollton, Maryland with 73 Chevy. We catch him coming right down the track with high roller. We're in the pull-off. The weight box is moving forward. He keeps fighting for traction out there, and he's going to spin out at about the 225-foot mark. Ron Hickson doing a beautiful job with the decision-maker's sled. So the high roller. Just right around 225 feet. There's a good shot of Howard Lewis. We'll wait for the distance to come off of the laser. I believe it's going to be a tough one to beat. 214, 214, and I believe it's 2.8, 214, 2.8. Nice shot from our camera high above the Coliseum here. As we get a good look at the entire counter sled at Howard Lewis going down to 214, 2.8. Didn't quite take it as far as I thought. And so there's the mark to beat. Howard Lewis with 214, 2.8. Now Glenn Davis brings his Chevy back and has to beat the mark of 214, 2.8 set by Howard Lewis if he wants to take the lead in this pull-off. Well, here he is, the Grand National Champion, the best of his class in 1985. He beat out uh, the Big J pulling team, who were the runner-ups, and the Three Bears pulling team out of Winchester, Virginia, finished third in the NTPA point standings last year. So here's a guy that would really like to make a win. His buddy has already won the 6,200-pound class because Tony Osteen and Glenn Davis travel together on the highways around the country going to many pulls each year. Here we go now, Glenn Davis. And he, uh, well, we thought he was going to bring it off the line. He was just clearing out his motor, evidently. He's yeah. got the green light on the sled and the green light, the green flag up by the starter. Now starting to build up the power. And here he goes. John, the bouncing continues, not as dramatic as we saw in some of the earlier runs, but it's still there. And they're losing precious feet and inches out there every time they bounce. He never really worked the bounce completely out of his run that time, I didn't think. And as he passed by the 200-foot mark, you can kind of see with the, the lips pursed together that he thought, I'm not going to make it this time. You can just kind of see it in his face. Here's the replay. A little bit of bounce early. Well, the body is moving a little bit because this is a flip-top body. When he's back in the pit area, he can flip it up, so we won't be deceived by the body moving. But now here at the end, now she's starting to, to go up and down a little bit, and he's losing traction. But anytime you're in the pull-off, you're a lucky person. And it comes in as 204, 6.1 for Glenn Davis. So Howard Lewis hangs on to the lead. Scott and Mike Johnson being represented tonight by Mike Johnson, who's doing the driving out of Perry, Oklahoma, 
Our third contestant in the pull-off, and the distance remains 214, 2.8. That's the mark to beat. Well, John, I certainly think that uh, somebody can still beat 214 feet, 2.8 inches, but it's going to take a tremendous pull because any time uh, you can run early in the pull-off, you're in that enviable position that everybody behind you has to catch you. And Howard Lewis is in the lead at that 214 feet. Glenn Davis in second at 204. So the Johnson brothers from Perry, Oklahoma, with Mike doing the driving, leave the line in their 68 Chevrolet. But that Airy did go. Oh, hey, they are moving. Oh, they got some speed. They're flying. They are going. This is good speed. This is good speed. I was thinking it might be another full pull, but whatever it is, John, it's the lead for the Johnson boys. They've taken the lead. Has taken the lead. Mike driving. Scott was standing right down here by our table, and as the wheels spun out at the end of the run, Scott gave it a good fist in the air, and he was happy with that run as well they should be. Here it is on the replay. He settled it down into the track very well between 75 and 100 feet and pulled it out nice and smooth. No bouncing here at the end of the run. And it's 228. 228. 11.3, a terrific run for the Johnsons, and that's going to put them in the lead. Almost 229 feet, just five feet shy of a full pull, and now Tony Osteen, with his Ford, has really got his work cut out for him, trying to make it two in a row. Earlier in this competition in Indy Super Bowl, Tony Osteen was the only Ford in his class, and he won it. This time, he's one of two, and he has a chance. This would make it, if he wins tonight, this will make it three wins in a row since he won the 1985 Indy Super Bowl 5,800-pound class, and he's already won the 62, as you mentioned, John, so he's got to really let it all hang out. The distance to beat, 220. 8 feet, 11.3 inches in the pull-off. Mike Johnson in the lead with the Chevrolet. So the Chevy and the Ford fans here at the Indiana State Fair Coliseum coming to life because it's been a Chevrolet Ford battle here tonight. The Georgia Rebel and all the Southerners stand and salute him as he goes down the track. Here they go. Boy, the crowd is behind him, especially the Ford fans. He's on it. He's on it. They're getting to run out of power, though. And your winner is going to be Mike Johnson. The Ford of Tony Osteen did not have enough power in the end. And he's going to fall about uh, 10 to 12 feet short. He gave it a good run. The Chevy fans breathing a collective sigh of relief here because they knew that that lead was in danger. Here you see it on the replay. He bounced a little as he got started, but it smoothed out nicely. And around the 150-foot mark, he really dug in and got it going down the track. Not quite enough to take the lead. Here it is. It's a 220, 227.2, 227.2. So it is going to be enough to move him into second place. So your winner will be Mike Johnson, second place Tony Osteen, and in third Howard Lewis. And so we'll try to get a hold of Mike Johnson and talk with him in just a few moments. I'm here at trackside with the winners of the 5,800-pound four-wheel drive truck class tonight, the Johnson brothers. Last uh, night, Scott did the driving tonight. Mike was the winner, and congratulations, fellas. Thank you very much. Scott, you had to be awful proud of your brother. Yeah, I did. Uh, he's been doing pretty good driving. Listen, this was a tough class tonight. What was going through your mind? That was a real tough class. We felt like uh, it was, you know, was going to be tough. When we got it out, though, we felt like we had everything right. We've been wrenching on the truck today. We had a little tough luck with the new clutch last night. We went back and, and worked on it and got it adjusted in and really hooked up today and went with it. Well, I tell you, it looked like from where we sat here along the track that the, that the track remained very fair throughout the entire session. Yeah, I believe it was a real good track all the way through. It was good and even. A uh, few of the trucks got to bounce, and I don't know what the problem was there, but we, we had a good clean, smooth run. Well, congratulations. Last year you finished third in this class. This year you finished number one, and uh, you'll try to continue that at the 87 Super Bowl. That's right. We'll be back. Congratulations, Mike and Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you.
We're getting set to start the 12,200-pound super stock tractor class. And in this class tonight, we're going to see 10 Case International tractors, three AC tr tractors, and then one John Deere. So the John Deere fans will have one shot at victory tonight. First up in this class will be Esden Lane from Dayton, Minnesota, and he has a Case International 1486 tractor. Take off. The smoke machine is in gear. We can hear the whine here in the arena as they'll attempt to suck out all of this black smoke that'll come out of the diesel tractors. But this is what the crowd here in Indiana like to see because a lot of farmers in attendance and they want to see the internationals go against the Alice Chalmers. There's one John Deere in the class, Ernie Ropp out of Kelowna, Iowa. He'll be the lone deer trying to beat these big red case internationals. So as delayed, the Dayton farmer from Dayton, Minnesota will bring the crowd to their feet with his international 1486, the former national champion of the seven, now pulling in the 12. Here we go. He's on his way and we are rolling. And he has run out of power. Turbocharger problems out there at about the 100 and 75 foot mark. A tough break for Red Line Fever, one of the prettiest tractors you'll see. Bachelor on the circuit as the lane. Here he comes off the line. He had a real smooth pull going. You can see the smoke machine being hooked up there to the right of your picture. And all of a sudden, he just flat runs out of power, so some kind of turbocharger problem. And we're watching the officials. Here's the, the distance, 178.7.2. Bobby Byram from Suffolk, Virginia, has a Case International tractor. He's hooked to the sled, and he's ready to go. The country rose. We saw Bobby run earlier in the 9,000-pound class. Suffolk, Virginia, down in the southern part of that state. As the lane went 178.7.2, that's the distance to beat as he comes alive. A little bit of leakage up at the top, but nothing to worry about. Here we go. Country Rose is on and boy, oh boy. Excellent run. Excellent pull for Bobby Byram. He's going to be out near, oh, I'd say 220 feet somewhere in that vicinity. There's a good shot of him un unhooking his helmet. I think he's pretty happy with that run. Well, they've taken the footage markers down on our side of the track where John and I sat because of the smoke tube running along the track. Here he comes as he gets a pretty good bite off the starting line, and then it begins to settle down, and it's taking a lot of power as it has all weekend. We've had an excellent power track here at Super Bowl 13. They're disconnecting him from the smoke tube, and here is the distance, 213, 213, 7.7. 213.7.7 for Bobby Byram. As I mentioned earlier, there is only one John Deere tractor in this 12,000 pound class, and it's Ernie Rupp who is set to run right now. From Kelowna, Iowa, for the John Deere 4430, he has the pressure built up. Pulling away from the starting line. Front end up a little bit at about 75 hey, feet. Hey, he's to the right. And a good run going for Ernie Ropp, and he spins out here just in front of us. Very close to the lead. Perhaps he'll have it. John, uh, just as he left the line, we uh, learned that that was Warren Ropp, Ernie's son, doing the driving from Kelowna, Iowa. There are John Deere dealers out there in southeastern Iowa, the 4430, and you'll never see a better running deer in this class than the Ropp tractor. And they really had some speed up off the line, a tremendous bull. And here it is, 211. 2.11, 9.0. So it's not quite good enough to take the lead away from Bobby Byram, but Warren Rob comes through with 2.11, 9.0. A good, strong pull. And Jerry Hart, and you can see as he backs up to the sled, the smoke crew is up there disconnecting the warm-up tube because these diesels warm up prior to the start of their class, then during the class. So the smoke tube, the warm-up tube is there, and then when he backs up, they take that away, and they hook him up to the main tube. You'll also notice that Jerry has his brand-new fire suit on, which has become 
a uh, new rule with the National Tractor Pullers Association. I believe after May 1st of 1986, that rule will take effect 100%, but the majority of the drivers have already started wearing them, and I think it's an excellent rule. You see the helmets and the fire suits, and we're in a uh, motorsport that requires that. Jerry Hart from Vandalia, Ohio now. He won this class a year ago, John. He won the 12,200-pound Superstock class. He finished second. He's the runner-up on the Grand National Circuit in this class as well. He's a tough competitor. The distance to beat, 213, 7.7. The barn stormer from Buckeye Country's on his way. He's flying. And a terrific run for the barn stormer. Kind of had to tiptoe down that uh, right sideline a little bit there at the end. But I believe the pull's good enough to put him in the lead. And, John, he would have thought when he went past the 200-foot mark that he was going to take it right out the gate. But Dave Hager's NC plus old iron side sled, that weight box goes up there and it gets him every time. Here he is coming down the track on the replay. He was moving, had a lot of speed, but comes up a couple feet short of a full pull. And it comes up 226. And 7.2, 226, 7.2, and that puts Jerry Hart in the lead with Bobby Byram in second place with 213, and Warren Ropp at 211 and 9 inches in third. Bill Berg and Brett Berg have drawn back-to-back -back pulls in this class, and the first one is going to be Bill Berg. With never enough, identical 3688 Case International Tractors, the new style as of about two years ago. The Farmington, Minnesota father and son team, and they've pulled here several years now as they've backed up to the counter sled. And you can see that the front end has been lowered slightly. Remember, this is the 12,200-pound Superstock class. They're loaded for the maximum amount of weight on the tractors that they can physically load on. And the smoke tube has come to life as the vacuolator outdoors winds up. And here Bill Berg winds up as he makes a beautiful start. He's flying. 226 is the distance to meet. It's going to be, oh, my word. And he runs out of power as he gets under the turbos right at the end of his pull. Bill Berg and never enough the professional contractor from Farmington, Minnesota, just out of the Twin Cities area. Not quite enough to take the lead, but it could put him into the top three. We'll wait for the graphic to come back up. He drifted a little bit to the right early in the pole, you can see there, but then corrected it and took it right down the track. Nice, strong pole, but he did lose power right there at the end. Just ran out of power at the end. As you can see, the front of the tractor dropped down quickly. And here it is, 212, 6.8. And that is going to be good enough to put him in third place behind Jerry Hart and Bobby Byram. 2.12, 6.8 for Bill Berg. And that'll bring up Sun Brett next. We've seen the first half of the father and son team perform, and now here comes Brett Berg in his Case International tractor. John, we might note if the folks will probably get a close look at the tractors going down. A lot of uh, safety features. One of them is a blanket around the transmission and the flywheel right underneath the decking and the steering column. It's a safety feature built in to these tractors uh, to keep all the pieces in should something happen to that area. The front end has been lowered on this tractor, helping to balance it. And Brett Berg is off the line here again. A little good head of steam, a lot of power. And and uh, John, tonight, the track is really taking power, and these guys are running out of it. And he's going to be even short of the 200-foot mark, and so he won't be very happy with that bull, and it doesn't look like it, as you see on your picture there. The helmet comes off. Here's the replay. A good straight run. Drifted a little bit to the right. Just ran out of power in between the 150 and the 200-foot mark. And so that's going to do it for Brett Berg. The pull is 173 feet, 173, 10.7 inches. 173, 10.7 for Brett Berg. And so now we'll look to Johnny Klug, who is due up. Out of Stockport, Iowa, another Case International tractor in this class that's dominated by Case International tractors. Johnny Klug is being hooked up, and he's ready to pull. And the leading distance right now by Jerry Hart 
226, 7.2. Well, John Klug has been a national champion many times before. But in this class of 1985, he finished in third place with his Case International 1066. As we indicated earlier in the broadcast, he's made a number of changes. So it's now a 3688 with the new sheet metal and some other modifications to the tractor. And it's nice to have the new look. John Klug, the farmer and the grain merchandiser from Southeast Iowa and also promoter of the Iowa State Fair in Des Moines in the summertime. Here we go. He leaves the line. Hey, he is on it. Oh, boy, boy. I don't know if that's going to be quite enough. If he doesn't go past 226, 7.2, I think it'll be enough at least for second place. The Red Baron comes up with a very strong pull here in the 12,200-pound class. He got the front end up off the ground. Oh, Dave. that was an excellent run. He really had the tractor nicely balanced. Here we go in the replay, and here again at 200 feet, you think he's going to take it all the way. Tractor comes up off the ground a little bit. Now it sets back down as he drifts towards the left side of the track, and then he starts to dig in right there at the end. And here it is, 224, 2.8. 224, 2.8, and that is going to put Johnny Klug in second place right now behind Jerry Hart's 226, so he's just about four feet behind the lead. And coming up, the man who won the 9,000-pound super stock class, trying to make it two in a row, Dickie Sullivan. Dickie Sullivan now from Naylor, Missouri. A nice paint job on that side panel of his tractor. Another Case International tractor, and he's going to give his shot to take the lead. Well, he has an entire top flight organization with his pulling, and Dickie Sullivan's been national champion. In fact, he is the defending national champion in this class of 12,200 pounds. Here's the Ford turbocharger setup. We've seen several of them here tonight already. He won the 9,000 pound super stock. He's got to beat. 226, 7.2. He can turn the tires and make as much horsepower as anybody in this class can. Watch him let that foot come off the clutch. There he goes. The rice farmer from Missouri is on the way. He's moving, building power. And I don't believe he has done it. No. Doesn't He's... look like it, the pull is quite good enough to take the lead. Once again, as we've seen so many times tonight, right here around 200 feet, you think, boy, he's got it. He's going to pull it out. War Eagle. Here it is on the replay. He got the front end up off the ground a little bit right there around the 75-foot mark. It begins to lift up some. Here's a little drift towards the right, then back toward or towards the left, then back towards the right. And digs in there at the end. A good strong pull. 220. 220 feet. And 6.4 inches. 226.4. So that's going to put him in one, two. I believe that'll put him in third place. Good enough for third place. A good run for Dickie Sullivan. And the Alice Chalmers, who looked so good in the 9,000 pound super stock, will do battle next. The Alice Cowboy from Indianapolis, Indiana. Al Cook has his Alice Chalmers hooked up and is ready to go. All right. He's trying to match power for power. He also has a Ford turbocharger set up. And Al Cook and Norm Green and a number of the John Lancaster, a lot of the other AC guys have really tried to perfect to build as much power as these internationals can. They'd love to catch them, and it would be a uh, real upset if they could do it. The distance to beat, 226, 7.2. Jerry Hart is in the lead on a Case International, and here comes Al Cook from the south side of the Indy 500 city. He leads the line. He's got him turning, and that front end comes up. He's got it nicely balanced. Hey, he's got some speed. Hey, look, he's really rocking and rolling out there, and boy, he gave it all she's worth. Sure did, and he's a lot of black smoke coming out of the, escaping out of the smoke tube that time. It's going to get a little smoky in here for a few minutes. The Alice Cowboy, that pull will probably put him somewhere around third or fourth place. A little bit of moisture dripping from the bottom of his tractor right now. Here it is on the replay. 
away from the starting line in good shape, good tire speed, wheels a little bit off the ground. One thing that Al has always had, he's had a uh, very well-balanced tractor, and you'll notice he carried that front end. And the pull comes in at 213 feet, 7.6 inches, 213, 7.6. Another local personality from Trafalgar, Indiana, John Lancaster, is now getting hooked up in another Alice Chalmers tractor to do his bid to take the lead away from Jerry Hart. We have five tractors remaining in the class. Two of them are ACs, and they're both excellent machines. The green light is on on the sled, and uh, track work nearly done here. This gives us a good idea since the camera's right on the tractor. You see the turbochargers. There's two under the hood, one on each side outside of the hood. You can see the dual pipes coming up. John Lancaster can build as much boost as anybody. He's got a good shot. He's rolling, rolling. He had to get on the brakes there at the last minute. He was really headed towards that right sideline, and we'll be able to see that on the replay. So he had to touch the left brake, and I think he lost a little power at the end, although I don't really think he was going to pull it out the gate. John Lancaster, here it is on the replay. Got away from the starting gate in good shape. Front end comes off the ground a little bit, a little bit of bouncing up and down. There he heads towards the sideline and pulls it back in. There you can see him hit that brake, and then he spins out. And the pull comes in at 209 feet, 10.2 inches. 209, 10.2 for John Lancaster of Trafalgar, Indiana. Four more competitors to go, and Howard Meredith is up next. Now Howard Meredith from Y Mills, Maryland is getting his Case International ready to go. Distance to beat remains 226 feet, 7.2 inches, and Jerry Hart hangs on to that lead. He was the third official puller of the class and has had one, two, three, four, five, six pullers come after, and none have been able to better the mark. Howard Meredith will see what he can do about that. Now Howard Meredith has the green light from the sled. Green flag is up. Taking a little bit of time getting the engine set. Now he begins to roll and he's away. He's bouncing around just a little bit off the line, but he's still got good speed. He's looking good tonight. The Case International, he's on the side. And his big Firestone tire is getting a tremendous bite. You'll notice we get a good look at the tractor there on the tires. There is not much lug left on the tires, John. And, of course, to most of these guys, the tires are worn down. That's the way they want them as he takes off his helmet. And he, pull, he spun out right here in front of us, directly in front of us. He's going to be a little bit past 200 feet, maybe 210. He was uh, slip sliding around a little bit on the starting line and maybe didn't make quite as smooth a start as he wanted to and also a straight start, but uh, he's still going to be well past the 200-foot mark. And, be up and there in it the comes up as 207. 207, 3.0 for Howard Meredith out of Y Mills, Maryland. We just received word here lately that Esden Lane will be coming back, so we still have four competitors to go. Danny Dean is listed on deck, and we'll keep an eye if he's up next or if it's going to be Esden Lane. And Danny Dean is set to run out of South Charleston, Ohio. And he will be the next to last. Well, no, we have one more coming back. So we still have three Case International tractors to see. Well, Danny Dean is the puller that has won more championships here at the Indy Super Bowl than anybody. That is the number five. Dennis Brabeck on the Alice Chalmers has won four. And Dave Stengel with the Minneapolis Moline several years ago came up with four wins in the years that he's pulled. Danny Dean has a shot. We've still got excellent tractors to run yet. Anybody could do it. The distance to beat still 226, 7.2. Jerry Hart is in the lead. Here we go. Danny Dean, the rooster, very famous tractor from the Buckeye State. Hey, he's got power. He's got speed. There goes Rooster. And I believe he's going to come up short. John? We've seen a lot of speed tonight off the line. And right about, you could really see that one take off about the 75-foot mark. That was about where he picked him up the front end, and he carried it for a long way down the track. 
and then spun out. Oh, here it is on the replay. We'll watch that front end come up. Danny has made a lot of adjustments to the tractor a year ago because there was some talk about him maybe getting into 7,000 pound class, so he lightened up the chassis considerably, lowered the front end slightly, and he comes up with an excellent run of 219 feet, 2.5 inches. And so that run will put him in, I believe, fourth place. All right, Max Simpson hooked up to the sled out of Charlotte, Michigan with an AC tractor. He'll be going for... He'll, he'll be going for the lead held by Jerry Hart still. All right, we've had a driver change at the last minute. Keith Haynes has come out from Charlotte, Michigan to do the driving for Max Simpson. Here's the D21. They're on it with mean old Alice. Hey, hey, hey. Nice run as they shut her down. You can always count on Keith Haynes and Max Simpson to be right there in the end in the 7, 9, and 12,000 pound class. In fact, they have been national champions in the 7,000 pound class on occasion. Keith Haynes. It's a good shot of Keith, and here's the replay. A lot of tire speed early. You can see him spin, picks up the front end and carries it for a little way. There's a nice smooth run there. He drifts a little bit to the left side of the track. Spins out right here in front of our broadcast table. Now you notice some of the drivers that we've seen tonight, some of the internationals have had wheel weights inside the tires. Some of them have had weights right in front of the tires as well as out on the front. So their placement of the weights is critical for their pulls. The distance, 210 feet, 5.5 inches. Two to go, John. It's beginning to wind down now. And you got to wonder what's going through Jerry Hart's mind because he's got to feel somewhat confident that he's got a pretty good lead. Everybody's been hot on his tail, but they haven't quite had enough power in the end. Jerry Van Dorf now also from Charlotte, Michigan, in an international tractor. And as we mentioned, time running out for the com competition to catch Jerry Hart. And I would like to take this opportunity, even though it's been some time over a year ago, to, as Jerry backs up, to say that this tractor used to belong to the late Jack Grant from uh, Western Ontario, Canada. Jack was a longtime national NTPA puller. And upon his passing, which was very sudden a year ago this past fall, Jerry Van Dorp bought the tractor and has campaigned it regularly and um, a couple of great international pullers. International 986, this is a Ford turbocharger setup. You see the two on the outside of the hood. There are two under the hood, very similar to John Lancaster's setup, only on the AC. So Jerry Van Dorp, he can build plenty of boost and make lots of power on his international, but he's got to, got to make a whale of a run of 226 plus if he wants to take over the lead from Jerry Hart. Green flag is up, green light on the sled. He builds the boost, he'll build nearly 200 pounds, maybe more, of boost. A lot of air, a lot of fuel going through the engine. John, I think they fool every, every one of us. If I'd have been a betting man tonight, I'd have lost a lot of money because I thought we would have had about he five had or six full pulls. Uh, again, a lot of speed built up between 150, 200 feet, a lot of speed, and then it just dug out here at the end. And it's not going to do to take the lead. It could well put him within the top five. A pretty smooth run, not a lot of right-to-left motion once again. Not much height on the, way, on the front of the tractor, perhaps a little heavy on the front. There you see him spin out and uh, gets a nice dose of black smoke coming forward. There's a good shot of Jerry Van Dorp, and here is the pull, 215 feet and 7.4 inches. 215, 7.4, and so Jerry Hart hangs on to that lead, and we should be seeing one more tractor, that being Esden Lane. Esden Lane now becomes the last man with a chance to knock Jerry Hart off the top of the pyramid. Well, we've waited a while now. They had some problems with the smoke tube, and they had to fix it. You couldn't run him without the smoke tube, not because 
of blowing the smoke out in the arena for the last run, but it would not be fair to the other pullers because there is a certain amount of resistance uh, as the smoke goes into the uh, smoke tube and the exhaust system. Now they're getting it set. And we hear the smoke machine come to life. The vacuolator is uh, pulling the exhaust, the black exhaust of these diesel tractors. And of course, the blacker the exhaust, the more power that they are making. When you see white smoke around a diesel engine, it's a lot of unburned fuel. But when you see a lot of deep black smoke, you know that a lot of air and a lot of fuel is in there and they are making power and there is a fire in the engine. Some of the smoke crew members still up on top of the tractor and working to connect that tube to the tractor. As Esden Lane waits his chance. Just one more run. A lot of the people now have made their way to the automobiles thinking that, well, Esden may not have a shot, but you never know. As Yogi says, it ain't over till it's over, John. Pulls up to a tight hitch. The chain is tight between the transfer and the tractor. He's set to go. We hear the smoke tube coming to life, sucking out the exhaust gases. He's had some bad luck with the tractor so far this weekend, but he'd love to change it all right now. The dairy farmer from Dayton, Minnesota, Esden Lane, ready to crank the tires. He's on it! And he has lost it. That's going to be the end of the pull. We waited a few extra minutes to see what might happen, and his Ford turbocharger system died at about the 100-foot mark. John? And Isden Lane has just had tough luck in this year's Indy Super Bowl. Once again, some kind of uh, mechanical problem never got power up, and so that is going to make Jerry Hart our winner. Jerry Hart finishing first. In second, it looks like it'll be Johnny Klug and Dickie Sullivan coming behind them in third place, close behind. As once again, Esden Lane with a disappointing run on that last try. 104 feet, 8.8 inches, 104, 8.8. And that's going to do it for this class and for this session. Session four comes to an end, and we will try to get a hold of Jerry Hart and have a word with him. I'm with uh, Jerry and Joe Hart right down here at Trackside. Jerry winning last year in the 12,000-pound class. And, Jerry, you come back to do it again. Do you have any special feelings with the win in 1986? Well, it was the first first time we pulled 11,000-pound to our class. And nobody, none of us really knew what, we took 1,000 pounds off the tractors, and we didn't know where to put what we had left. And it was kind of a guessing game, but I think all the guys seemed like they hit it really close. We had about the third hook this year, which is what we had last year, and it's a good, good spot to be in. Did you feel confident with your run early in the class? Did you think that that would hold up? No, no, not really. Uh, you never do when you get that close to the end. You can just see a lot of guys shooting past you, but uh, it was a good pull. I was, I was satisfied with my pull that I won tonight. I was satisfied with my pull last night, and I got fifth. So, you know. Well, you got to take those. You can't be in the winner's circle every time, and everybody would like to do so. That's right. Joe, you've got to be happy for Jerry. I'm excited. <laughs> you, you sound like you're real loose tonight, Joe. Uh, no. You guys going to go out and party a little bit tonight? Well, I don't know what they got playing. <laughs> <laughs> we got the family here, so you have to behave when the family's here. And a lot of Buckeye followers here as well. Oh, yeah, good fans here.